as birth pains he came out of the tomb. Now, Peter got it. I, I, Paul gets it, but Paul's, Paul's a different animal at this point. I mean, at this point, Paul's Saul and he's killing Christians. So God's got to wait a few years before he gets his Paul. He's still, Saul's still a maniac. Saul's a terrorist. Don't lose hope. Jesus can save terrorists. If you didn't amen that, I just don't think you were listening. And if you didn't amen it because you don't want him to, check your heart today and become a new creation. Because the reality is you, you, he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to changing their mind about who he is. If the church of Jesus Christ in America spent half as much time praying for the redemption of the souls of those who hate us as we did that God would bless our leaders to find them and kill them, we might have already seen a difference happen on planet Earth. Amen. Just half as much time, we might have seen someone saved. There's my political soapbox for the Easter Sunday. That's all I'll give you. And you're going, thank God, that's all we want. That was my other little rabbit. Peter's the preacher. Watch Peter in his little letter. 1 Peter 1.3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now he's not Jesus of Nazareth. He's addressing Christians. He's addressing believers and he's a few years after Acts 2. So his theology is developing. We're not done with him, by the way, in Acts 2. We're going to come back and watch him close that message. It's pretty cool. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again. Time out. Underline it. Circle it. Put a star next to it. He birthed Man again. When did he birth him the first time? When he took dirt and breathed into it and made him a man. Adam. And then at the resurrection, he rebirthed a new man on planet earth. For all who will believe in Jesus, he has begotten us again a living hope. How? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So as God raised up Jesus, he was rebirthing man. In God, there's only two men on the planet. There's the first Adam and there's the last Adam. You're either still living according to the first Adam, or you're a believer living according to the last Adam. Paul would say, and thus we conclude, that if one man died, all men died. So wake up to the reality that you've already died in Christ and be a believer that you can now live in Him. Amen. It's the whole heartbeat of the Christian message. We birthed us again through the resurrection of Jesus. Watch this next one. This is the, the other usage of born again outside of the Jesus speaking to Nicodemus passage in John 3. 1 Peter 1.22 since, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently. With a pure heart, 23. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, through the word of God which lives and abides forever. When he said word of God, he didn't mean the Bible. John opens with the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who was the word? Jesus. Through Jesus, he is the word of God. Jesus, the word of God is the reason why we are born again. There has been a dichotomy created in the church between believers and born-again radicals. The secular media, the media of the church, the, those who wish not to offend, act as if there's a difference in believers. Believers are normal. They're good old people that stay calm and pay their taxes and treat one another well and go to church and try their best. They can even call themselves Christians. Born-agains. Born-agains are nut jobs. Born-agains take this thing serious. They think that you had to have a spiritual renewal when you came in. That it's not about joining the church, it's about joining the mystical body of Christ and making yourself a part of who He is and Him a part of who you are. And they're very offended by our statements of Christ lives in us and He's the hope of glory. But I say to you, you, you can have your little dichotomy all you want, but the reality is the New Testament only knows 
born again. Because the resurrection changed the game. You could believe on Jesus before he died. But you couldn't believe on Jesus after he raised without being born again. And that wasn't some mystical experience. It's just the realization that his death was to kill off the first Adam so that his resurrection was to bring to life a new man. So Christianity is not about going out and getting recruits and signing people up for your church and picking them up in a van and making sure that you've got a second campus. It's about putting life inside of dead people. So someone can say, well, what do I lack? I got this and do this and do this. But if the life of God is not coming out in us, springing forth out of who we are, then we haven't yet tapped into what it means to be born again. And it's not, it's not a mystical, it's not a hard thing. It's not uh, questionnaires and, 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 and going through classes. The new birth is waking up to a new reality that I am alive in Christ and the old me is dead.